Welcome back to another power station testing video. Not too long ago, I uploaded a video that showed numerous tests for this Alcatel 500 watt lithium iron phosphate power station, and it performed extremely well. In today's video, we'll be testing out this much larger 2000 watt portable power station made by the same company. This was sent to me by the company, but I made it very clear to them that I only produce fair and unbiased testing videos. They agreed to my terms. Let's open up the box, take the power station inside, and take a closer look. And here it is, out of the box. A pretty big unit. Now this one weighs just under 50 pounds or 22 kilograms. The dimensions of the power station are 15 and a half inches from left to right, 10 and three quarters from front to back, and 13 inches from top to bottom, or 39.4 centimeters, 27.9 front to back, and 33 centimeters from the bottom to the top. Included with this power station is the instruction manual, and on the very top of the unit, right over here, if you open up this door, you can see inside is the power cord. This power station is designed to be plugged directly into the wall. There's no need for a charging brick. Let's pull this off of here. Protective plastic. This power station appears to be constructed out of ABS plastic. And when you look down at the top of the unit, there's an aluminum handle on the left side and on the right, making it very easy for you to carry this unit you can hold it very close to your body and not strain your back. Looking at the front side of the power station, you can see there's multiple outputs. You have a DC section for 12 volts. Over here, with this rubber seal, which is very nice, you have an XT60 port. That's gonna supply up to 10 amps. And over here, you have an accessory socket. Down here, DC jacks rated three amps. Over here on the USB section, you can see you have two USB Type A's. Maximum output for each one of these is 2.4 amps. Over here, you have a QC 3.0 18 watt quick charge Type A. And over here, you have power delivery Type C, two at 100 watts. This power station also has a two watt LED light, which is very useful if you're out camping, you're working outdoors, you wanna illuminate an area, you'll be able to do that with this power station. On this side of the power station, you have ventilation openings for cooling. And right over here is the area where you're going to plug it in to your AC line or even your solar panels to charge the unit. The cable on top simply plugs right in. This portable power station has a 2000 watt maximum continuous output. And the battery that's used inside this unit is a lithium iron phosphate battery. The voltage is 51.2 volts and it has a 2000 watt hour capacity rating. We're going to check that out in this video to see how well the battery performs under a full AC output load, just a hair under 2000 watts. If I open up the door, you can see what's inside. And you can see there's an Anderson connector for solar or if you want to charge from your car. And over here is where the AC cable gets plugged in. What I really like about this unit is how fast it can charge. Over here you can see 1100 watt supercharge. So this unit will charge from being completely drained to fully charged in around two hours, which is pretty good. Over here, 500 watt maximum input for solar. I like that because a lot of units only allow usually 100 to the 300 watt range. So having 500 watts up to 48 volt input, that's gonna allow me to use my 400 watt solar module and it's only gonna take me around five hours using a 400 watt panel. So if you're using 500 watt input, it should only take around four hours to fully charge this unit using solar panels. And that's what you want. You don't wanna to have to wait two days to charge up a unit this size. On this side of the power station, you have two cooling fans mounted. This button turns on the AC output, which is right underneath this door. It's a sine wave output and up to 2000 watts continuous, 100 to 120 volts. 
on the rear side of the unit, 2000 watt portable power station, model P2001, specifications already mentioned. And over here is one thing I did not mention, which is extremely useful, and that's that this can be used as an uninterruptible power supply up to 1100 watts. We're going to test that out using a laptop with no battery. When this is delivered, it's only around 40% charged, so I'm going to connect up the AC cable, charge it up to 100%, and then we're going to begin testing. In my case, it was around 42%. We're now up to 95%, and over here you can see we're just a hair under 1100, there it is, 1100 watts input power. And it's showing 10 more minutes remaining to get to 100%. Okay, we're up to 100%. You can see that thing turning, that means the fan is going, which is on this side. Now to power up the unit, you simply push the button and hold for a few seconds. You'll hear the fan come on initially and then go off. To turn the light on, you simply push and hold. It is a pretty bright light and may not appear that way because of my photography lights shining down on the power station, but it is bright. So you have a steady light. Now you have SOS and then you have a strobe effect. And then you just push it to turn it off. Let's turn it on one more time. What I'm going to do, take this light meter and I'm going to hold it directly in front of that light. It's going to give me the highest reading in lux. Max is up here in red. I'm going to hold it right in front and it'll give us an idea of the brightness of that LED compared to like a flashlight. 56,000 lux, so pretty bright. All right, so the first thing I want to do, let's open this up and turn the section on. You can see three indicators right here. And when you turn on the USB section, right there's an indicator. Let's take a look at the voltage reading here. 13.62, and I'm sure it's gonna be the same over here on the XT60. Let's see what we got here, if I can do this carefully. 13.62, negative at the bottom, where it's angled, positive at the top. For the first test, it's going to be the 12 volt 10 amp accessory socket in the DC section. Over here is your 12 volt 10 amp XT60. You cannot have 10 amps going at the same time on both because you'll overload the section. It's 10 amps for the both of these right here. So you could put five here, five there, two here, eight there. As long as it adds up to around 10, you will not have any problems. Over here, you can see the voltage, 13.663 at that accessory socket. When I turn this on and put the 10 amp load, which you're going to see right over here, it's going to have a little bit of a voltage drop because the way the wire connects inside this male accessory plug, there's a little spot where it's a little narrow and it does heat up. It's not going to affect the test. You're still going to see 10 amps. If you hear any beeping, ignore it. There's a fault inside this unit. For some reason, it likes to beep when the test is taking place. Here we go. I'm going to wait 45 minutes and come back. Okay guys, no problem at all. We dropped maybe 5 or 6% right here. And it's been about 48 minutes, so there's no problem with that port. Let's try the XT60. Okay, let's repeat the test now. 45 minutes using the XT60 connector at 10 amps. And at the same time, I have one of the jacks connected at 3 amps. Let's get it going. Okay guys, 45 minutes down and no problem at all. Over to 87%. Now let's go on to the USB section. What this is going to do right here is place a 2 amp load on the port at the top left. Over here is going to go to this load tester set for 2.4 amps. The quick charge port is going to go down to my phone. I'm going to have the middle quick charge port at the bottom heading off to that load tester set for 3 amps. 
Over here is gonna be the iPad, which is down to 10% state of charge right now, connected at the USB Type-C, and the other USB Type-C goes to the GoPro Hero 8 Black. I'm gonna turn everything on, let it sit for 45 minutes, just to make sure there's no issues. Okay, let's put this to, good. Okay guys, 45 minutes, not a problem at all. So a thumbs up for the DC section here and the USB ports. Now let's take a look at the AC output. I'm going to take the red and black probes, insert them into the electrical receptacle with it turned on. You'll see an indication right here when I push the button on the right side. We're going to measure the output voltage and output frequency. So it's looking at right around 110, just a little bit under. I would have liked to have seen that a little bit higher. I prefer to see it around 115, 120, but as long as it's able to hold the 110 all the way through the discharge cycle, it will not be a problem. So 109.7. Now we're going to take a look at the frequency. Just under 60, 59.99, excellent. If I push the button and hold it, Right over here it says 60 hertz flashing. So if I push the button once quickly when it starts flashing, it can change between 50 and 60 hertz. So I'm gonna push it and hold it until it flashes. And now I'm gonna push it again. Now we're at 50 hertz. Now it's set. Let's open this up. Double check to see if it's now gonna give us a 50 hertz reading. There you go, so that definitely works. Now let's take a look at the AC output to make sure it's a sine wave waveform. The oscilloscope probe is connected to the AC output. We are set at 60 Hertz and right over here you can see the waveform is sine wave. Might be hard for you to see but it says right down here 60.0000 Hertz. Now I'm going to connect a very heavy load, a hair dryer on high. You're going to see the wattage right over here and we're going to see what kind of an effect it has on the AC waveform. Looks fairly stable to me. The next thing I want to do is see how the output here compares to the output on this electricity monitor. It's set for watts. Let's turn this on. So 12.99 over here and 13.13, so right around 14 watts apart. Anything's possible, this could be slightly off, being a little bit lower, but the two readings are very close. The next thing I'd like to test is the input charging. Now at the end of this video, after I complete the AC output test, I'm going to connect up a 400 watt, 48 volt solar module to this unit to see how it charges. But right now what I'd like to do is see how well the unit charges using 12.6 volts, or if your car is idling at 13.8 volts to 14. I wanna see what the input wattage is going to be. So I'm going to take this connector, plug it in the side. Right over here I have the power supply. It's gonna be a little difficult to see. I'll turn the light off so it shows up easier. But the initial voltage is set to 12.6 which is the voltage of a fully charged lead acid battery. So let's turn this on. Okay, so we're charging, and keep in mind we're at 81%. Let me turn the light off, you can see the display better. Hopefully you can see it. 
12.62, we're showing almost 8 amps going in, or 100 watts. Now I'm going to increase to 13.8. And right there you can see 13.8, and the input wattage hasn't really gone up that much. And you're going to get around a 100 watt input going into the power station, which really is not a lot of power because it could take easily 20 hours to charge this unit back up using your car. Let me keep increasing the voltage to see what kind of an effect it has on the wattage. We'll keep going higher. I think this stops at 30 volts. I'll tell you what the voltage reading is because you're not going to be able to see it. So let's go up to 15. 15, we're right around 120. Let's go to 17 and a half. 17 and a half, we're at 170. Let's go up to 18. 175. Let's go to 20. 20 volts, just a hair under 200 watts. So if you have a 200 watt solar panel, that's 12 volts. That's what you're going to get. Let's go higher. Let's go up to 25. Let's go all the way to 30. So 30 volts, roughly 300 watts going in. Let's go any higher. 31. You just saw when I had it around 19, 20 volts, the output was just under 200. So you're not going to get much higher than that, no matter how many of those 12 volt, 100 watt panels you place in parallel. So you want to make sure you take the panels, place them in series, two of them together. That's going to boost the voltage up and then take the series panels and place them in parallel with other 12 volt 100 watt panels or whatever other panels that you're using. Keep the voltage as high as possible and you'll charge this unit efficiently. If you're going on a long road trip and you want to have this charge faster than 100 watts, what you do is you pick up a boost converter like I showed you in a previous video and it will allow you to charge this at a much higher rate. If you'd like to see how it's done, there's a link that's been placed at the end of this video. Now we're going to test the AC output. We're going to start with the refrigerator first, make sure it could power that, then try the microwave oven on the countertop. Then we're going to take this outside and try a bunch of tools and appliances. The door is open just enough. You can see if the light comes on. Over here you can see how much wattage once I push the button on the right side. You can hear the compressor going on the refrigerator, peaked out around 700 watts when it was trying to start up, and now we're leveling off just under 200 watts. So no problem powering a refrigerator. Now let's try the microwave oven. You can see right here, plugged into the side of this unit. Here's the cord going in. Inside here, you can see there's a cup of water. So let's turn it on and make sure it works. Right down here, you can see 1,414 watts. Microwave oven running pretty good. Let's let it go through the whole cycle. Another 10 seconds. Okay, very good. Let's take this outside and carry on with the testing. Now we're going to test a few AC loads that have high inrush current. Let's see if the portable power station can handle it, starting with this shop vac. As you just saw, 1,200 watts. Let's turn it on again. No problem with the shop vac. The circular saw has very high inrush current. Let's see if the portable power station can start it up. One more time. No problem at all, and the problem is almost always when you go to start the saw, not when you're cutting, especially if you have a sharp blade. Now let's try this heavy-duty chop saw. And the last 
last one I'm going to try is this Porter Cable Air Compressor. As many of you know, high inrush current starting one of these up. Let's give it a try. <laughs> Now we're going to overload the power station. It's going to be just over 3,000 watts. Let's see how long before the power station turns off the output. The overload protection kicked in after 6 seconds at just over 3,000 watts. Now let's try the hair dryer and vacuum cleaner. That's going to put us right around 2,500 watts. We're going to see how long it can run before the power station turns off. Two minutes and three seconds at just over 2,500 watts. So you can exceed the 2,000 watt rating by 25% for a couple of minutes, which is pretty good. Right here I have my 400 watt LG solar module connected up to the power station. The angle of the panel matches the angle of the sun right now in South Florida this time of the year, which is right around 40 degrees. In the summer, it's around 85 degrees, which is almost straight up. Let me show you the input power on the side of the power station. Now before I fully charge this up to 100% to perform the 2000 watt power output test, what I'd like to do first is show you that this can be used as an uninterruptible power supply. So I'm going to plug this in, you're going to hear it click, there's a relay inside. Alright, the battery from my laptop over there, my old laptop, has been removed, so all the power is going to be coming from the AC outlet through the power supply. So I'm going to push this button right here. Now you're going to see when I turn on the laptop, just a small amount of power being drawn over here. What's going to happen, the great majority, is going to be coming from the AC outlet. As soon as power is disconnected, Full power goes to the AC output of the power station, to the laptop, and you should see that the screen on my laptop does not turn off. So let's give it a try. Now what I'm going to do is pull the power out right here, and we're going to see if this 5, 6 watts shoots up, and we have no interruption in the laptop power. Here we go. Power is increasing over here. It was 5, now it's 30 watts. And you can see that the laptop had no interruption with the display. Okay, we're ready for the 2000 watt constant power output test. Everything here, the light, the hair dryer, and the toaster oven on the correct setting, comes out to right around 1970 watts. I'm going to leave it connected and hopefully it does not overheat and is able to run this all the way down to the point where it turns off. Let's give it a try. A very impressive performance, 47 minutes and 45 seconds with just under 2,000 watts constantly being supplied. As you saw right over here, the output voltage was right around 109.2, 109.3, 109.4, 109.5, 109.6, 109.7, 109.8, 109.9, 109.10, 109.11, 109.12, 109.13, 109.14, 109.15, 109.16, 109.17, 109.18, 109.19
and that's where it started off when the battery was fully charged. And I wanted to see that that voltage was going to hold at that level throughout the entire discharge cycle. Some power stations that I've tested, the AC output voltage starts off high, and as the battery is depleted all the way down towards zero, the voltage drops lower towards 100 volts. With this unit here, you have a very stable AC output, which is perfect, and that's what you want to see. You can hear right now the cooling fan going really strong to cool that battery pack inside. Considering the heavy load, the battery capacity was good, and if we did a 1000 watt test, more than likely the battery capacity would show up a little bit higher. The fan only ran for about five minutes after this powered off, so let's turn it back on. We're still at zero, so keep in mind, five minutes ago this finished the test. If I plug it in, there's no indication for overheating, and it's charging just fine. Now that's pretty good. Normally you have to wait like a half an hour to an hour with a lot of power stations, but apparently this one here cools very well because we're able to charge. Now I'm going to put just a small charge to 2% and we're going to take one quick look at the output voltage for the DC receptacle. Alright, 2%. I'm going to measure the voltage at the XT60 because the accessory socket and the XT60 are on the same circuit. I'm going to take a look. Check it out. 13.55. Even though the battery's been depleted, you'll still be able to have voltage well above 12 at the accessory socket and the XT60. Guys, that is it. I have to say the product is very good. A little pricey, but it works extremely well. I would have to say this is the best one that I've tested yet. As always, thanks for watching.